You're not gonna find me. Watch me turn into the leaves. Watch me. All right, kill the lights. That's right, boys and girls. I'm invisible. I don't even have to hide. I could dance back here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Oh, he's doing his season two dance. <laughs> Almost busted my butt. I hope there's no rats in here. We about to take the entire yard. We about to take the entire yard. We about to take the entire yard. Now it requires all schools to have a silent panic button system in place in order to cut down response time for police or fire in an emergency event such as an active shooter. You didn't know that, or maybe you did. Either way, you don't want to break the law. So whatever shall we do? Oh, I know. <laughs> Safer Watch app, mobile panic buttons. And yes, I make my own sound effects. Whether it be an active shooter, medical emergency, crime in progress, or a fire or explosion, once I've pressed the Safer Watch mobile panic buttons, it will send all of my emergency profile information and GPS location straight to the dispatch center and to nearby patrolling first responders. That means you won't have to waste precious time on the phone giving out all the information that first responders need to properly respond to your location. Like your name, what you're wearing, location of the event, there any weapons, first aid, what's your what telephone, telephone number, number? number? How what floor of the building you? are you on? Imagine shrinking down all that information and putting it into one button. Well, bam, here it is. This is phenomenal for schools and it meets the requirements for the Alyssa Law. But not only is it for schools, it's also for places of worship, government buildings, workplaces, different organizations, events, and other locations. So with all that being said, you got one question to ask yourself. Does my school or workplace have these amazing buttons that can save lives by drastically cutting down response time? By first responders. If the answer is no, then you need to get on. You can start by visiting www.saferwatchapp.com. Once you're there, forward that information to your boss or your principal and let her know you need to get the Safer Watch mobile panic buttons now. All right, let's see if there's a button on here to get back to the video. <laughs> Episode if I didn't walk into the scene. We're back! All right, we're back. Don't ask me why I always do that. It just became a thing. I just walked into one scene and it's like now that's how all the police cars have to start. Another episode of Police Cars Season 2, Episode 2, Double Deuce. Today we're at the Villages of Miami Shores and man, do we have something impressive waiting for you. So this is actually Miami Shores uh, Village Hall, which is like their city hall. Uh, it's where they have the town hall meetings and everything. So I'm gonna head over to the police station where we're gonna meet up with my friend, my long time, hold on, let me turn this down a little bit. My long time brother, we went to the police academy uh, together 15 years ago. Now we're gonna have a reunion police car style here in the village 
of Miami Shores. So standing outside the Miami Shores Police Department, just to put it into perspective, Miami Shores is located about two, three miles just north of the most northern uh, border of the city of Miami. So just two, three miles down the road, you hit the Miami jurisdiction. My brother! How you been? What's up, man? I knew you'd be coming sooner or later. Guys, let me introduce you to my academy brother, Officer Godwin. What's up, Nod Squad? What's going on? How you doing? Yeah. Not only are you an officer, but also a former Marine. Yep, four hey. years in the Marine Corps. 2nd hey. Battalion, 5th Marines, Fox Company, Blackhearts. Shout out. Thank you for your service, my friend. Thank you. Look at you now, man. Yeah, bro, I've been in the K-9 unit now. Yeah, K-9 unit. I'm, I'm digging the get up there. Yeah. It's a uniform. Is that the K-9 uniform? Official. Yep. Yeah. This, uh, I'm missing the tack vest, though. Usually I wear a bulletproof vest, but I got it in the car in this heat, you know? So, black, I guess, to camouflage at night. More tactical. More tactical. Cool. All right, tactical. All right, so Miami Shores. Why don't you tell us about... Well, we got our police station. This is the back here. Uh, just uh, got a little special gift over here for you to see. It's a uh, loaded out... Uh, Tahoe. Mm -hmm. We'll check that out later. Uh, we're in the village of Miami Shores, a beautiful suburb of uh, Miami, Miami-Dade right. County. Three square miles, real residential, and a very safe, family-friendly city that we like to keep it that way. So three square miles? Just over three square miles. So how many sworn officers? We have just it? under 50 sworn officers. 50 sworn officers? Yeah, that makes us the largest small department in Miami-Dade County. The largest small agency. I liked it. That was a good one. That's it. Yeah. Pretty clever. In Miami-Dade County. So give us a breakdown, like the different units that you guys have in your department. Well, obviously K-9. Uh -huh. I'm one of the three units, but uh, we're, we're, we're looking for another dog and get another another officer. So you have two dogs? Have two dogs right now. Looking mm -hmm. to get three. So that means you're hiring soon. That does mean. What? Plug! All right, keep going. We got, we got traffic units. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were two officers running traffic all through the day shift and afternoons, okay. midnights. Uh, we have uh, GIU, roughly four to five uh, detectives. So GIU stands for? General Investigations Unit. All right, we're breaking down acronyms. Yep, sorry. I'm, yeah. yeah, it's police lingo. Yeah, we have uh, bike units okay, that nice. run, run all the time and a university squad. A university squad, what, is that like a college? Yeah, Barry University, located up there off of Miami Avenue. Nice, we're and, gonna uh, go check that out later? Yes, we will. All right. And we got a, a drone squad too that runs drones for us when needed, if they need to be deployed. Did you say drone squad? Yeah, I know you like drones. Yeah, so it's like an air unit. That's exactly it. Nice, it back you up all the time, I guess. They can. There. Oh, wow, nice, awesome. Tell us about the cars. We're here for the cars. We're here in the back of the station. I got the Tahoe, which is the bread and butter of the fleet. I'm going to show you later. It's tricked out with all kinds of electronics. Nice. Crown Vic, the newer uh, Explorers, and some uh, unmarked vehicles here to Ooh, show you. Unmarked. So we're going to be touring that Tahoe back there. That beauty. Can you pull her out? Oh, yeah. So you can get some B-roll? I know you like that B-roll. I love that B-roll. <laughs> I love that B-roll. We got a 2018 Chevy Tahoe V8. It's also got the ability to switch to a four cylinder when you're stopped at a light or just uh, cruising at a low, low idle speed. Uh, we'll go, we got uh, Goodyear tires, a lower suspension because it's a police package, uh, an optic IR camera, which we're really going to go into uh, when we get inside the vehicle. It's tricked out with lights all around it from the uh, blueprint uh, computer module that, that, that activates all the lights and sirens and a PA system. Uh, the black and white scheme is uh, it's pretty much a municipality thing down here in Miami-Dade County. Black and white vehicles are smaller municipalities. Uh, we got Police Miami Shores and, uh, and our badge uh, established in 1932. I also see that you got the decals over there on the side in red. Yeah, that's a uh, caution police work dog, just so you know that when the dog's uh, rocking and rolling and you hear barking coming through it, there's a, a police dog inside to stay away from it. As we're moving to the back of the vehicle on the top, you'll see four individual uh, antennas, that's for the low jack system for locating and, and uh, taking down stolen vehicles. Another police canine goose on the side here and our, our motto dedicated to your safety. Ball hitch here for all kinds of trailers that we have at the police department. Everything from trailers with our canine equipment to uh, tag readers to radar uh, trailers. This side of the car is exactly the same as the other. Let me show you what I got over here in the front. This signifies a special little vehicle because inside of it is the, is the goose. The goose! Is the goose going to be loose? Yeah, he's uh, he's in there waiting to meet y'all. All right. 
Let's uh, let's go meet him. Let's go. You guys ready to meet the officer of the year, voted uh, most friendly officer? Let's meet him. There he is. Hey, Goose. Have a seat. Hey. There he is. Hey, so Goose. Goose is uh, he's a standard Malinois up to touch shepherd mix. He's wearing his harness right now. I'll pull this off him so he doesn't really have to worry. But the harness actually has a leash attached to it. So when he, whenever I deploy him, he's already got a leash on him. It simply goes like that and it's still connected to his harness. So that's your partner in crime. This is my partner, yep. Now that you've met Goose and uh, we've toured the outside of the vehicle, let's go inside and do a ride along and I'll show you all the cool gadgets inside. Nice. All right, all right let's go. You gotta call shotgun. Shotgun! What? Dude. Dude. Yeah, it's a canine car. Get in. I'll talk about it later. Oh my god. So, Goose is back there hanging out. Yeah, he's crying. He wants the gate open when we drive. Oh, he likes the gate when he drives? Yeah, he likes to come up and uh, look forward to say hi to everybody. Alright. No, don't put him out. Oh my god. Where's the camera? Don't forget he's been it. He's not gonna bite it. He's just yeah. Alright, put him back. Put him back. Put him back. Put him back. Close the gate. Close it. He was right here. <laughs> he was right here. Officer Godwin, I see a lot of buccaneers, uh, flags and signs, and I see something that says Barry. Yeah, we're at Barry University campus, one of their overflow lots. I figured this is a good spot that we can go over the uh, interior and all the cool gadgets I got going on inside the vehicle right now. Nice, but before we do that, yeah, you got to think about B-roll, don't you? The B-roll. So I'm going to need you to step outside the vehicle, right. please. Can I open the cage and let the dog? No, no, keep the dog back there. Keep the dog back there. <laughs> And for social distancing purposes, so you can take off your mask, I'll stand outside so you can speak loud and clear. I love that. That's All a right. great idea. So inside the Goose Mobile, which I uh, like to name it, I got my low jack system up here that's running. When the car is on, the low jack's on and hunting. It's got uh, the four antennas on the top, and it's a 360 degree, picks up a beacon of when stolen cars are entered into the computer. Uh, it starts putting off uh, a signal that this thing will track, and then it'll navigate me to it. From there, I got the standard uh, Toughbook Dell computer. It's got all my electronics, so everything on the car goes fed right into this computer. A standard navigation system that comes uh, factory from the car, and a blueprint uh, signaling system that runs the LED lights and the horn and sirens all at once when I'm running to calls. Underneath the blueprint system, I have our Harris uh, trunk mount, which I keep on there, our local frequency at all times to monitor what's going on through our dispatch. Yeah. So under that, I have the ACE K9 system and monitors the temperature of the car. If it gets too hot, what it'll do is it'll turn on all lights and sirens, roll down the back two windows, and kick on a fan so that the dog won't overheat and die of heat exhaustion, which is the number one cause of work dog deaths. One of the coolest things is mounted on top of our spotlight. It's an IR camera. That IR camera gets fed right to my laptop and records everything. I can point it, it's omnidirectional, and it picks up everything that I can't see, it sees for me. So what do you mean that it, it sees for you? It's not like night vision where it amplifies 
ambient light, this amplifies heat. So if you're hot, I can see you. If you're running from us and, and it, whatever's hot will just glow. Kind of like the, the police, like in a police chase, you yeah, see you the see helicopter. The white, the white, hot, white and black. Yes. And everything, and every, and someone's running and you just see they're, they're just glowing white. So that, that's, that's what this is. That up there? That's it. That's it. So it's right here in the car. In the car, right to my laptop. So uh, we're operating mostly at night and if we drive with our lights on, we're visible and the bad guys can see us. If we go blacked out in a, in a residential neighborhood sitting in a, a driveway somewhere, we can have that on operating and see everything and nobody can see us. Very, very sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> so Officer Godwin, fun fact, you are going to be the first police cars episode at night that's the sun setting so we're actually going to get a real light show with you um, and it's going to be dark out and another thing i want to do is test that heat signal uh, operating system that you have kind of got tongue-tied myself yeah sure we could check it out but it's not dark out how about uh how about i show you the junk in the trunk the junk in the trunk <laughs> I know you and the Nod Squad like to call it junk in the trunk, but it's really the gear in the rear. The gear in the rear. Season two, man. I'm open to new things. That's it. All right. So run us down with your gear. All right. Just popped it open. I got first thing first is the tack vest, rifle rated. It's got uh, my, I have carry my uh, my taser. It goes on the tack vest. I like it up high and not down low. Uh, some pockets, a tourniquet, and an asp, and another radio pouch for the radio to go in. Next most useful thing I have is the first aid kit. Basically, it's a trauma rated for everything from tourniquets to bandages, gauze, wraps, everything I need here in a bag, ready to go. Also have tourniquets for the dog, God forbid something happens to him. Okay. And the marker? The marker? That's for uh, marking the time and date on the tourniquets and or on the forehead. Outstanding. If, if it needs to be. Also have bolt cutters. Hmm. And what do you use those for? Oh, we're doing uh, massive searches and you have to get into yards. Most of most yards in Miami-Dade are, are have chain link fences, so we just bolt it just to cut the lock to get in. So all the way here, here. Another thing we use a lot is our AED. All of our cars in the department have this with officers trained to use them in the emergency situation that it's needed. Awesome. So AED with the K9 Goose sticker in the back. Man, he is just everywhere. That boy is promoting, promoting <laughs> everywhere. Uh, this is I know what that is. It's a hard sleeve that we used to uh, work the dog on uh, bite bite work. Okay, yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> and no, I am not going to wear that. We'll keep uh, additional equipment. I got an extra pair of boots in there, uh, another harness, a uh, muzzle for when he goes to the vet, uh, another muzzle, uh, flares for at night for uh, traffic control, um, some police do not cross tape, and a uh, rain, uh, fluorescent rain jacket. This is the SBRAR. Uh, it's not always used. It's it's more so if I'm if I'm if I have goose up and I'm not working him and I'm backing up another canine officer, I can have the the firepower and back him up. Interesting enough, when backing up uh, other canine officers, they might want uh, somebody who is trained like them From, versus a patrol, yeah, yep. a patrol officer because of the movements, yep. where to stand, and everything. So there is times, so what you're saying, there is times where you're not running goose yeah. and you're just Especially, backing up yeah. an officer. In, in this Florida heat, dogs can only search for so many minutes. Okay, yeah. so then that's when that bad boy comes out. Yeah, when I put goose up to cool off, and I'll, I'll pick up with another canine officer that picked up where I left off. Awesome. Is that where they keep the flux capacitor? <laughs> <laughs> no, the radio harness, the radio, external radio harness here, uh, inverter. Uh, the Ace K9 brain here, and just a little bit of storage, storage and bolts and nuts here. And I keep a, a lot of wires. Man, but these are really nice and neat and tidy. Yeah, done well. Done very well. Shout out to whoever did that. Good job. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much the brains of the car, what makes all these gizmos and gadgets work. So uh, I'm looking at the horizon, beautiful sunset. With that, 
Are we gonna get our demonstration? It's time to use that Noptic IR camera. Ooh, where are we gonna go? Do you have anything in mind? I got a few places I think we can play hide and go seek. Ooh, let's go. All right, so while we're headed over there, I wanna know what gives with your door, man. Talk to me. Yeah, so I was uh, on routine patrol and an officer was trying to effect an arrest mm -hmm. and uh, literally a block away from where I was at. As I rolled up on scene, he's uh, in the middle of trying to put cuffs on him. Rolled up through the car and parked, didn't even think about goose in the back. Had the cage open, closed the door, got out, helping the officer. Uh, goose was trying to help too by trying to open the door with his mouth because he doesn't have opposable thumbs. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So Goose made that mark? Oh yeah, he tore that apart. So you're saying you were out in front of the car yes. trying to make an arrest and Goose was like, no, 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 that's my partner out there. Let me out. Let, Let me, me out. out. Let so me he out. came through here uh -huh. and was trying to open this up. That's it. Yep. Clever girl <laughs> or boy. He's like a velociraptor. Yeah, he is a mal maligator. Maligator, man. Very, very highly intelligent creatures, those Malinois, huh? at our range we're going to show you the Noptic IR camera and what it can pick up and whatnot but I forgot to mention another cool feature in the car which every car has capability of is monitoring all the traffic light tag reader LPR tag readers that we have we have over 30 of them in the city that cover every exit and entrance to the city by every major thoroughfare right now as it's going and right now as it's running it's picking up every expired tag expired license suspended license revoked license if somebody if the registered owner has a warrant and if the car is stolen or the tag is stolen it's going to alert every officer that's got it running and let us know which which direction they're in what lane they came from and the time so essentially it's like uh, I did a police car with Sweetwater. They had an LPR where they had uh, cameras mounted on the car. It's exactly, it's exactly the same cameras. We just have a bunch of them scattered throughout the city, and it all filters to every single police car. Nice so demonstration to show how the Noptic IR camera works. Go hide in those bushes over there, and I guarantee you, with all the lights that I have, you get deep enough in there, I can't see you. But that IR Noptic camera, you're gonna light up like a Christmas tree. But you have, look, you have the brights on. I got it. You have the spotlight on. You got the spreader lights you got on. The spreader light. So that's not fair. Of course you're going to see me in no. those bushes. Not if you get deep in there. I can't see it with my naked eye, but my Noptic IR camera. All right. right, I'll do it under two conditions, just to prove that you're not going to be able to see me. You have to cut off all these lights, number one. And number two, under no circumstance can you let out the goose to come find me. Goose will not be on the loose. All right, all right, I appreciate it. All right, so uh, let's just kill these lights over here, Mr. Uh, I'm going to see in the dark. All right, guys, what you don't know is that I am a master at manhunt. That's right, I am the champion. In my block when I used to play, oh, when I was little at manhunt, I would be six feet, I could take off my mask. I would be basically invisible. There's no way that he's gonna see me in these bushes. That's right, you're not gonna find me when I turn in to the bat. Speaking of the bat, I hope there's no, almost busted my butt. I hope there's no rats in here. All right, watch me turn into the leaves. Watch me. All right, kill the lights. I'm invisible. So the, the camera optics picks up heat and it amplifies the heat. There's no fighting me. I don't even have to hide. I could dance back here. So there's what you see white is his skin and the glow off of it <laughs> while he's doing his season two dance. Yeah, I could switch it in the camera settings using it during the daytime. White hot, black hot. It changes it up for us. A fun fact, after Hurricane Irma, we utilized this system as an act of uh, burglary in progress. A guy was hiding in the big brush piles of uh, down a residential street. I was able to use this, lo locate him, and apprehend him with the help of Goose. A high-tech tool used to curb crime 
helps reveal a trespasser's hiding place. This is unique because they are one of the few agencies using this technology. We are taking you inside of a Miami Shores police car. It is September 26th. They are searching for a suspect hiding in a debris pile after Hurricane Irma swept through. At some point, one of our canine officers who has a thermal imaging on his car sees a heat signature and it's uh, pretty good. You can see that it's a human being basically hiding uh, behind the foliage of a tree. You can see the officer run out of the car. Cops are able to catch up to Clayton Chapman and charge him with loitering and prowling. But the bigger point here is what happens after hurricanes and how cops can protect a community. Yep. I'm like the shadows. No, you're not. What's there's, that, uh, no, there's no fun. What's with that dance you got going on? You saw that? Cool, cool technology. Uh, man, it is, it is dark. I know, it, first ever. It is really dark out here. And I think this is probably the most ideal setting that I've ever done for a light show. A light show, oh yeah, it's perfect. You want to run down the light show? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey man, uh, we're trying to do this light show and we hear rustling up in the trees. What you see there? What you see there? And it's either dogs or I think it's possums. I think it's two possums or raccoons. Up there we hear them. It's like rustling up there. So we turn on the lights to make sure that it wasn't indeed a human being out there. And uh, come to find out. Oh, and they stop behind the tree there. Sneaky little snails. Dude, tricked out with lights. It's bright. And purposeful. Yes. They can see you coming. They see you coming and they get out of the way. And uh, you know, you do work at night, so it is important to have as many lights as you do. Yep. All right, starting from the front, the more lights, the better. We got lights down low inside the headlights along the grill. So if we're up close on a car trying to affect the traffic stop, you could see the lights. Lights way up high from a distance. The higher they are, the farther they'll shine. You can see us better. Also, we've learned that we have if we have side lights for effect coming in through intersections, it's, it's good to have lighting 360 around the whole vehicle. We already went over the IR optic camera. Now we're just this uh, LED spotlight. It's more focus light to uh, to help us be uh, more tactical when approaching vehicles. Keep on going. We got all the way lights everywhere. The light in the back again, same thing up in the front. We want them the whole side of the car light up. And then again on the back, we have them in the tail lights flashing, and then also the four LED lights you see in the center, down low and up high. This is also effective with the computer system. When I hit the brakes, everything will go red, so cars that are following me will know that I'm braking and I have all my brake lights going on. Another cool feature about this car with that computer system that affects and, and controls the lights, the blueprint, is when I put the car in park and I have it on the three mode, it'll turn the whole front side of the car white, bright white, to help hide me approaching the vehicle if I have to affect a traffic stop at night. I'll show you, come on over here. When I'm in a three mode, once I put the car in drive, it's gonna, it's gonna make all the front lights all white, super bright. Ready? All right. How cool is that? What? Yeah. So. Can't see me approach you. Okay. It's all about tactical. All about tactics. So if I'm a car, and I'm trying to look back and gauge where this officer is. Can't see where I'm approaching from. Can't see where you're approaching from. I have from. the advantage. So it's very important when working at night, right? Very important. And then, uh, and then you have the uniform. Then you have the FLIR system. It's all making sense now. Yep. Right now I'm illuminated with the light because I just exited the vehicle. But if I, oh, if I had just exited the vehicle, this light automatically kicks off. So I won't be backlit. Very good important now uh, close the door it'll, it'll turn back on again so if I was in the car it's gonna kick back on boom 
Are you sure that Goose didn't just turn it on in there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. He's pretty smart. <laughs> He's pretty smart. The cage is closed. The cage is closed this time. Guys, secrets out. None of this technology really works. It's Goose and they're going like, rrr, 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 rrr. and he's hitting, he's hitting the panels. <laughs> he ain't hitting the panels. All right, so the standard one, two, three applies with the light box. The one is for traffic only. It's gonna, just going to turn on my back rear lights, let people know that I am stopping traffic or whatnot. I can also uh, work directionals on the top, which are amber lights. I can direct traffic to the left, direct traffic to the right, or just both ways. The second one's for takedowns. For It's going to illuminate all of it. And the third one is when I kick it on, it goes lights and sirens real loud. We'll hold off on that for now. So another feature is cruise lights. If I'm stopped in a, in a, in a position at one point point, I want to be seen, and I don't want to have flashers going the whole time, I can just hit the cruise lights, and it's constant red and blue at all times. It's great to, for high visibility when patrolling in neighborhoods. 19860 West Dixie Highway. It's a occupied gray four-door sedan. Like a vehicle never moves from the spot. We've seen several people enter and exit the vehicle. Like the rear driver's side window is broken, covered with a trash bag, possibly using the vehicle to sell 52. You want to know about that? Yes, please. What is that? That's a radio broadcast system. So oh, I thought you had a dispatcher in your hood. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what it is, is in Miami Shores, we have so many surrounding jurisdictions, we want to be able to monitor other radios. So if I'm out of my car on a traffic stop and I have my one side radio on one channel, I can hit that button and broadcast whatever's going on on another channel while I'm out of my vehicle. Ah, makes sense. Again, guys, I think we're being duped and there's somebody inside the hood. <laughs> Talking really loud on <laughs> a PA. I'm just kidding. Let's go over That's the horn. Cool. Ooh, yeah. Ah! We just woke up the possums again. <laughs> this is the part of the video that if you have the volume on loud, you might want to turn it down a little bit because we are going to demonstrate the sirens. No, really, man. Awesome car. Thank Some, you. I think the best tech I've had, or we've had, the Nod Squad had, on the police cars episode yet. That that like heat infrared system. I still don't know if he really saw me. I gotta look at the footage. Uh -huh. Look at that heat infrared system on this thing. Awesome, and it's a great tool for you to have out here uh, when you're doing the work that you're doing, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out and checking it out. Uh, so. Uh, where can they find you guys? I know you mentioned something about a canine opening or something. You guys hiring? We're always hiring. Yep, you can go to uh, MiamiShoresVillage.com and uh, click on the departments, police, and find your application there. All right, so there you go, guys. If you want to drive one of these cool whips, uh, possibly with the, what's it called again? The uh, Noptic, right? Nop Noptic IR camera. Noptic IR camera. And uh, supposedly they can see in the bushes, still got to see the footage. Uh, <laughs> Go over to Miami Shores, Village of Miami Shores. What is Miami, the Village of Miami Shores.com. Go over to Village of Miami Shores.com and submit your apps. There's really not much left to do but to sign off. Do you know how to sign off? I believe so. All right. Time for the sign off? All right. Oh, where are you going? Hey, you get goose out for the sign off. Oh, chew right? that, chew that. All right, Nod Squad. I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, an optic IR camera is definitely going to see you. My truck is on fire! I still don't know the name of it. Yeah. Somebody said Crown Nick, Crown the Nod Rod, the Nod Mobile, <laughs> <laughs> the Nod Squad Car. They got a lot of names.